The following footage you are about to see is pre-release footage. This is not representative of the final product. This video is technically sponsored by Square Enix, as they invited me out to the Media Tour event. Final Fantasy is a registered trademark of Square Enix. This video is a grab bag of all other things that did not have a specific topic. Among topics that will be covered are hunts, a Q&A that happened, things I did not do, and my overall thoughts of the event. This is a very varied video, so make sure to use the timestamps for this one too. Though other than maybe my opinions, I recommend checking each section. Let's start with what took a lot of time away from me. A good half an hour was spent on hunting. One player went around looking for hunts, or at least exploring and ended up finding some. The first one was the Queen Hawk. This one is very, very deadly. It has B be gone and B be here. After casting, you need to stay out of the indicated area for 8 seconds. Notice this buff. For the duration of this, if you are where you were told not to be, you will be randomly chosen to die. Later on, it will start to use Forced March on you. You will need to position yourself so that you walk into the safe area. So if in is safe, position yourself so that you are toward the outside. By the time the march ends, the hawk is already targeting people. There is no time to gap close in. You must mechanics or risk death. It also has a line AoE in the direction it faces, so keep the usual advice of never be in front of enemies. I am honestly unsure if I am at liberty to reveal the rewards obtained other than the obvious you get tombstones, so I'll just not. It's not like the final live letter won't tell us anyway, right? There was also a second hunt I joined. In the other area was a frog. This one is Simon Says. Chirp means get out, ribbit means get in, croak means be behind it. After the tutorial, it's gonna start mixing up its attacks. But first is multiple stack markers. Simple fight, but something interesting happened I have never seen before. Hunts do have a despawn timer. We somehow coincidentally fought this one when it was about to despawn. So this guy just runs off after wiping us. That's also largely my fault because I made a missed call on the mechanics. Though I don't know how many people around me were there aside from two, so maybe I only killed them. At the end of the event was a little Q&A we asked questions for. I'm going to sum up the question and answer while also giving my opinions. I'll be skipping some too as some were that they weren't ready to reveal anything yet. First was a question on giving us official rankings for achievement points. The answer was that on the technical side, it's very possible. However, Yoshida isn't sure how much of a point there is to it. Even aside from the, like, one person who has finished them, achievements are mostly a solved game, right? So he'll be going to look at the data when he gets back to Japan. If you aren't aware, I am very much an achievement hunter myself. I have a few glaring spots of free achievements to get but I've been working hard on them for a long time. I've even been working on the 5,000 Battle Leaves achievement. So something like this I would very much be interested in. However, I can't really disagree with Yoshida's thinking. While we still have plenty of room for new achievement hunters to come and join us towards the top of the rankings, it's not exactly much of a race per se. It can be an amusing thing to watch as Cider has been showing, but that's more the personality than the achievements themselves. Or like my Menta Roulette series, the achievements are the milestones and goal, not the content. So I can't really say like it's a missed opportunity if we never get it. The next question was about PvP, and maybe catering to pre-made light parties in Crystal Conflict, like more tournaments outside of FanFest. This is something they're already looking ahead to. 7.1 will be updates for PvP, and the dev team already has a few ideas. They're waiting for the current round of tournaments to end, but one idea is maybe having a regional-based tournament. So if you like pre-made PvP, look forward to the future maybe? I'm not huge on PvP, but I can't really say no to something like this. I still have footage of old Borderlands on my hard drive, waiting for the new version so I can make a video comparing and giving opinions. So 7.1 will be a neat time. That's Frontlines though, not CC. Plus pre-mades I don't partake in. The third question is about gear and glamour. Will they ever unlock non-AF gear sets for other roles to use? The answer to this one is a bit weird. Technical side, very easy to do. They're mostly sticking to it though. Would be weird to have Black Mage in plate, right? 
At the same time, they recognize that glam is a big part of gameplay, and that nothing is set in stone. The Black Mage example I gotta really just shake my head at, though. This is the Bogia gear of Black Mage. That looks pretty plate to me, with or without the coat part. Then how many times have you seen a bathing suit tank? Streetwear is one thing. A pair of water shorts and a necklace does not make the most protective tank gear. If anything, keeping gear locked is safer for making sure players wear the correct gear. ARR gear still has many new players confused because the game doesn't outright spell out what stat is the one they need. So heal is grabbing int accessories because that's gotta be it, right? If they do allow for unlocking sets, it's gotta be like, glamour only? Would that work though? Currently, gear restrictions are glam restrictions. You can't decouple them this far into the game, can you? So if they remove restrictions on sets, maybe add something more to direct players onto the correct stats? Them locking accessories to roles will likely be kept, though. I remember Heaven's Word and Stormblood. Next question. Garlem Old Restoration and bringing players together for gathering and crafting content. The answer was a firm maybe. They don't want to do something that's exactly the same, but similar to Ishgard where there was a visual impact as we progressed. However, they want to avoid FOMO as much as possible. Maybe they're thinking more in line with the Domain Enclave. Before we found out the full scale of the Endwalker content, I had the idea that we would have a Garlem Old Restoration, and Corvus would be our new Bogia. Saint of the Firmament, by the way. So I'm completely on board with this. Also, there's only so much you can avoid FOMO. Making something evergreen that escapes the norms of the gameplay is very difficult. So I hope they're not afraid to try things that dip further into FOMO. Not in the matter of intentionally making it FOMO, but that if they constrain themselves too much, it might end up boring. Limiting FOMO in a live service game is really awesome. Eliminating it is unfortunately impossible without having extreme design constraints. The final question from the Q&A is about the Blacklist update. Will they be updating other social aspects? The main one being the friend system. The answer is yes. They want to finish helping players protect themselves first. So they want to tune up the Blacklist. Maybe we'll see some post-launch changes there. But then we'll see changes to other social systems. The Mentis system also was mentioned. This is great. Social systems have needed updates for years now. I still have one worry with the blacklist, though. I think it should be two-way. Just because I blacklist my stalkers doesn't mean they stop stalking me. Even post-blacklist and them knowing they're blacklisted and being reported, they will still harass. Stalkers don't care. So I really hope the blacklist functions are extended if possible. As for the mentor system, I hope it's more ways for us to get rid of the trolls who only come in to shit talk and whine. The fact that Midgard mentors remember the names of specific players for their actions over literal years of kicking and reporting? Oh, remember that one? Ah yes, that's the one that starts spamming the n-word if you ignore their insane gibberish. Currently, we have a mentor who spends half their time spouting conspiracy theories and intentionally false info, the other half randomly insulting people. Kicking the dude when he starts throwing slurs at people is a limited solution. I am also worried they go the route of locking who is allowed to be a mentor. I've said it in my mentor series, I'll say it again in my mentor series, adding more requirements will only make things worse over here. The worst mentors I've experienced are broadly the elitist ones, rather than militant casuals. Raiding in no way proves anything in terms of your ability to mentor. Probably the oldest member of the Midgard mentors is broadly not a raider, yet she's consistent in her ability to be a mentor without doing that raiding. Knowing your stuff and applying it at a high level are not mutually inclusive. So we'll see. Hopefully it's focused on the social aspect and helping us remove trolls, because god are they not fun. The final question was instead asked by Yoshida. He sees the memes, he sees comments, so he saw all of you saying about the brightness of the Dawn Trail title screen. He asked us if we thought it was too bright. I thought it was so-so, but this is without it being 5am and dark, like what the context of many of the memes was. The goal was to make it, like, foggy so that when it clears you see Tyrol. 
They might change it to be more like Overcast. They don't want to flashbang us, so it might be toned down in the final release. And that covers the Q&A. It was short, but we did get a couple of points to think on. And given that last answer he gave, I had a lot to say on it. Now on to the elements of the tour I skipped. For this stuff, you'll want to check out other creators. I did not have time for any of it. For some points, it might have made for better footage than what I got. Whether you accept the excuse or not, I truly was not fully prepared, even without the hunt taking so much of my time. I had been planning ahead for weeks of how to handle it, but even that prep was not enough. If I'm brought back in the future, I'll be better prepared. Hopefully. So to start, the only dungeon footage I got was in Explorer mode. Each boss arena you can see, but you don't get a look at the bosses themselves. I did not do it with duty support or any of the other people there. I also did not do any zone exploring. I merely followed the markers when hunts were posted. The towns? Completely ignored. So despite the footage you're gonna get to see other people have, I didn't even attempt it. I know what I'm about, so jobs were my focus. Anything else you can think of? Either wasn't part of the event, or I just didn't do it. So yeah, I wanted to at least have this section to note what you won't be seeing from me if you were hoping for it. I'm one person, and I can only do so much. I'm sorry for any disappointment. Now let's end on my thoughts going through all of this. The day I got contacted, I was convinced it was fake. There was no way this was a real email. But I have to be sure, right? What if it is real? But there's no way they'd actually want me for the event. And well, obviously it was real. Yet every step of the way, even as it became more and more clear that it was real, my thoughts kept going back to it being fake, or that they'd decide they didn't want me. I'm not going to go to any media tour. And then I'm filling a notebook with notes. I'm getting more info about the event. I'm packing a suitcase. They're giving me final information for the event. I'm on a plane. I'm there. I'm meeting Yoshi P himself and have pictures of him. He's not just a hologram. The staff were all really nice too. So accommodating and helpful and just... It was all super nice. I met a bunch of people I was surprised to see. Frosty after just having been on his podcast was a hilarious coincidence. Cider was there. Mad because small. Noisy Pixel, June Bob, and even Grinding Gear. Even for as not knowing a lot of the people, it was weird that I'd be considered a peer with any of these people. Imposter syndrome in absolute full effect. I don't deserve to be around these people. Though apparently, Xenos thought it prudent to leave me a message when he found out I'd be there. So now, we have beef. For your transgressions, you will have to be destroyed. Xenos, I shall bring a wrath upon you that shall see no cease. You will regret your actions right now. Hello. Even beyond that, everyone got to see how extremely awkward I am. I'm just some nerd. I've been behind this avatar the entire time, and I don't see myself changing that anytime soon. It's kind of weird that my introverted ass has been out there and seen by people. I want to potentially go to a fan fest someday, so eventually it was going to happen anyway. But being part of a crowd is a very different context. We also all got goodie bags on the way out, and I was surprised by just the absolute quality of it all. I love my new poster, and my favorite part is the sweatshirt we got. Just in time for summer where it will basically never be able to be worn. I guess come winter, I'll live in it. Here's a quick picture of everything I got. Maybe this is just the typical quality for influencer gifts. I look at what we got and think it's too nice for me. I genuinely love every bit of it. I have a use for nearly all of it. Are we sure I deserve this? I genuinely? genuinely did not actually expect I'd actually make it there. That I'd ever actually be invited. But I have proof. I have the memories forever. And the memories of planes. I don't care if they're safe. I don't like planes. Landing is extremely not fun. This is the kind of mental gymnastics I've been going through since I got that first email. I've been all over the place. I do also want to be clear with one part about my content. Minta Roulette? Going on hiatus was the original plan. I do have an idea or two I want to do before Dawn Trail comes out, or at least start on the scripts for videos I'll make in Dawn Trail. But I did go really hard to get these videos together, 
so I think I should take a little break between answering comments and streaming. Given the chance to go back, I wouldn't change my mind. I'd do this again, and I will absolutely accept if they invite me back for the next expansion. I've never been able to accept that any of this ever mattered. That this channel meant anything. No matter how many times people have told me I am the reason they got the game, or enjoy the game because of my help or anything. Eventually, my brain tells me that the many times it has happened, it doesn't matter, it's all wrong. I did nothing. It's one thing to read text online that you helped. Imposter Syndrome has no problem discounting every little bit of it. It's a very different thing when you're forced to hear it with your own ears, face to face with people. They have no obligation to give kind words unprompted, yet they were given. I barely knew how to react. I could feel my brain stall. Those of you who complimented me at the event, you have no idea how much my brain has been turning it over and over in my head. Thank you. Maybe this all has been worth it. Maybe I haven't just been wasting my time. I truly made a difference. People have been able to better enjoy the game because of me. At the very beginning of this all, I started making videos wanting to help the people who actually wanted it. Sick of constantly having even the smallest tips thrown back in my face. I wanted to help people. I guess I really have. No matter how much my brain wants to tell me no, maybe I actually have. It's really mind-blowing. Thank you all for bringing me this far. I'm going to try and make my Dawn Trail stuff better than ever. May the power of Anne and Idhog slay waste to your enemies.